The Purdue Boilermakers picked up their second straight Big Ten road win last week, knocking off the Maryland Terrapins 31-29 at CQ Stadium in College Park. The Boilermakers now standing at 4-2 overall, 2-1 in the Big Ten West. And this week they'll play their only home game in the month of October as Purdue hosts the Nebraska Cornhuskers Saturday night at 7.30 at Sold Out and we are sure raucous ross Aid Stadium. It is the Jeff Brom Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union. We've got the head coach with us, and we'll talk Boilermaker football up until the top of the hour. As always, you can get your questions in at 888-246-2678. We're on Facebook tonight on the Purdue Athletic site, so if you're there, let us know where you're watching from, and we'll get a shout-out to you sometime tonight. We're also on Twitter on the Purdue football site, so you can watch us there as well. Along with the head coach, we'll be talking later on in the show tonight to Mershon Rice and to Corday Sidnor, who had a couple of sacks last week in the win over the Terrapins. But we'll have the head coach next. It is the Jeff Brom Show, presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Third and six. Tonga Vailoa, another high snap, really, and intercepted. Picked off by Corey Trice. Brings it across midfield. There's a flag at the near side. Trice looking to take it back into Maryland territory and brought down at about the 35-yard the line. I heard you say that already once. Hand off. Pushing for the end zone, and it's a touchdown for Purdue. The kind of recent time to throw. A back shoulder catch by T.J. Sheffield and a pickup of a first down. On whoever he's cutting after he starts with inside the tackle box. O'Connell, what a drive that he has engineered. Going for the corner of the end zone. It's a touchdown for Purdue. From Aiden O'Connell to be able to hit Mershon Rice. That could be one. I'm sure that'll be the lead conversation at halftime for those guys. The pitch to Salik Knotts. Great matchups. And Togavailoa goes down in the backfield. Togavailoa is absolutely smothered. O'Connor surveying a touchdown catch by Toro. Looking through it again this year. Hands off to Makapi, who's in for the touchdown. The decision by Jeff Brom, third down, deciding that now it's game time. Let's get the points on the board. Welcome back to the Jeff Brom Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. The Rorman Automotive Group is supporting your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Jeff Brom Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics, Rorman Automotive Group, Boiler Up and Hammer Down. And we're joined by the head coach now. Jeff Brom is with us. And Jeff, anytime you win a Big Ten game, period, it's a good thing. And when you win two in a row on the road in tough places and tough teams to play against, you've got to be pretty happy with the way October has started. Well, you're right. Uh, you know, I thought it was a really good win for us. Uh, we went into an environment where that team had been playing very well. Uh, they were 4-1 and one and really took Michigan down to the wire at home, and uh, we just found a way to win. You know, we had our ups and downs without question, but we kept the game close. Uh, we found a way to make enough plays. Our defense had a good spurt there of getting some stops, and then uh, in the fourth quarter, we just kind of found our rhythm. So, all of them are great wins, but uh, to beat a really good football team means a lot, and uh, we just got to continue to try to build on that. You know, one of the things I've appreciated about this team at the halfway point of the season is the fact that you can have some things go against you, and you, the team has been able to bounce back. And you look at the first five minutes of that game, first play of the game, you lose 13 yards on a pitch, and then they go right down the field and score. The first time your defense has given up a score in the first possession all season, and you're thinking it might be a long afternoon, but right after that, your offense went down and scored, and from that point on, it was, a, it was a seesaw game. Well, we've been able to handle adversity well. There's been numerous games where we've been down, and uh, we just found a way to hang in there. I just think uh, we've got a good group of guys. Uh, we talk about, you know, how this thing's going to work every game. Uh, you know, you would like to think you can go into a game and do a lot of great things and win and everybody be happy, but that's just not reality. When you play really good football teams, 
you know what, they're going to make some plays too. And uh, you, you just got to try to win more than 50% of your, your opportunities against each other. You got to eliminate the, the negative plays as much as you can in turnovers, and you just got to hang in there. And I just think our guys understand – uh, because we've played a lot of football teams over the years, uh, good football teams, that you just got to hang in there and play your, your rear end off to the very end and uh, don't give up, uh, stick together as a team, and uh, hope for the best at the end. And I just think that uh, you know, we've got some good leaders on the team that understand that that's how it's going to be every week, unfortunately for us. When you play against a dual-threat quarterback like Talia Tunga Vailoa, um, you've got to be wary of his ability to run the football. And I can't remember, just thinking back right now in the game, there was a, really a single play where he hurt you with his legs. I thought you did a good job, for the most part, keeping him in the pocket and taking the run away from him. I thought so. You know what, uh, just like you said, the first drive, uh, you know, they kind of got after us, went right down the field and scored. After that, we settled down, uh, you know, did some really good things. Uh, you know, kept things in check. And, and really, you know, if you just take away the, the long drive or the, the long passing in the half and then the long, you know, drive at the end of the, the game, we played a solid football game. It's just unfortunate that uh, situationally we have uh, made those mistakes. And, uh, you know, we've identified them. Uh, we've worked hard about it. We've talked about it a lot today. We practiced on it. And we just got to get better at making sure that, uh, you know, those situations can't hurt us. You talked about the defense being solid throughout. It's really rare for a football team to win two straight games when you turn the ball over three times in each game. And I think that's a testament to the fact that your defense has been able to play very good complementary football so far. I think so. I think that uh, we've got experience over there. Uh, we're really deep on the defensive line. A lot of guys that play and rotate in and, and play a part, so they play with good energy. Our linebackers, we've been able to try to keep those guys fresh uh, as well, even though we have some guys injured. In the secondary, we're, we're getting guys back, uh, so we're able to, to kind of rotate there a little bit. And it's just a matter of just uh, learning every week, uh, identifying uh, what the opponent's strengths are, trying to take that away. Keep the ball in front of us, stop the run, make tackles, and uh, you know eliminate the penalties. And I just think our defense has uh, got experience and they've done a good job. And you know we've got a lot of really tough football games left. I tell them uh, all the time. I tell our coaches, hey, let's uh, make sure we understand that there's a lot of really good football teams, and let's not think that uh, you know we're too good at one thing yet. We just got to keep working as hard as we can. All right, before we go to our commercial break, let's take a quick call from Daryl from Indianapolis. Daryl, go ahead. Hey, coach, how's it going? Very good. Uh, last week, I uh, missed the first few uh, seconds of the uh, segment because I was trying to figure out how to listen and watch at the same time while I was actually, you know, transitioning to Indianapolis. But I want to say happy belated birthday to the wife. Okay, thank you. Very special to me because we shared the same birthday. Oh, okay, October. great, great. So, so she got to be the brains of the operation. Okay? That's right, right. Well, happy birthday to you as well. Thank you. Secondly, I want to say that, you know, I ran track of Purdue and, you know, I've done a lot of coaching and stuff like that. But I believe that. Uh, last week was one of the most memorable and one of the best Purdue moments. You know, I was just so proud to be a Boiler because we played against a matchup. And matchup teams are very hard to play because they can go either way, all right? And we won, and that was a team victory, and that just showed me that we're so much closer to being, you know, having a program versus just winning season, all right? I think that um, the team pulled together, and no one person stood out because everybody on the team are stars, all right? So that was definitely a team win. So, uh had to give kudos and props to that. You know, tell the team that I love them, okay. right? Okay. Well, <laughs> I do have a question. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, you know, um, I know that, you know, teams have now discovered how well Charlie Brown, Charlie uh, Jones is, and they've been trying to stop him, so they're trying to give so much cushion. But um, I also noticed that there's, like, a lot of open up in the middle, and I noticed last week you guys attacked uh, with uh, Payne Durham and the other tight end uh, pretty good in the middle and kind of opened up the running game. So I was wondering if – you know, if those guys are going to try to take away the, the long ball, you know, if we we're going to see more of a uh, uh, pain. No, that's a good question. I, I do think uh, our other receivers and tight ends are working hard. We want to make sure we get them as, as involved as we can. Uh, or Maryland did have a really good corner, and they kind of put him on Charlie quite a bit, and the guy did a pretty good job. I mean, uh, he was, I think, uh, second team all Big Ten, uh, just really did a good job. Charlie's been a little bit nicked up. We had some 50-50 uh, balls, but that corner did a good job of, of knocking them down. Uh, so, you know, but it does open up things for others. And I just think that uh, in order to be a really good football team, you have to have multiple weapons. Everybody's got to do their part on any given day. Hopefully anybody can step up. I think you are correct. In order to, 
to build a great program, you got to consistently try to win, and that means you know playing solid football every week and making sure that you figure out ways to win close games and making sure that you're able to be competitive in all your games and give yourself a chance to win. And while winning is the ultimate goal, we want to be competitive and be right in the thick of it. And it uh, doesn't matter who we play, how good they are, we want to give ourselves a chance to win. So I think that uh, we're, we're trying to make uh, slow but steady progress there. There's still a lot of season left, uh, a lot to prove. It starts this week, but uh, I like the makeup of our team. And you just got to be hungry every week, and you got to make sure you understand it doesn't matter if you won or lost the week before, you got a lot to prove the next week, and that's what we got to do this week. All right, we're coming to you from Walk-Ons. It is the Jeff Brown Show, presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Our Boilermakers have always been what unite us. To this hallowed field, we return each fall to be a part of something special. We've seen legends born and moments etched in time. Wide open, got him! Touchdown, Purdue! Seth Morales, holy Toledo! Thomas steps away, Coleman football, and got it! Beasley rushes free for the Purdue touchdown! It's pandemonium, coach, open the air! Hope we have a whole lot more of these. It's a great win for Purdue. For nearly a century, ross Aid Stadium has been the home of Purdue football. As we forge ahead, we have a rare opportunity to fortify the legacy of future generations of faithful Boilermakers. Together, we will guarantee the passion you have for the old golden black. We'll endure it for years to come. Let the carnage and the chaos continue. How about the Boilermakers? Boiler up, friends. The time is now. to a free ball for the Hawkeyes. Tessier on a banjo, though. No slight way to your right side attacker. As a person who is tall and a long wingspan, you always feel bad when that happens as Colvin sends that right down. At the service line, Tessier looking for Urquhart. That is sent back. A big block for Purdue. And they sweated it out. Banjo has that block tipped. Tessier to Urquhart, sends it out of bounds, and despite the huge fight from the Iowa Hawkeyes, Purdue. The 2022 Purdue football season is presented by Purdue Global. Purdue Global is Purdue's accredited and affordable online solution for working adults. Persistence pays off at Purdue Global. Let's check out on Facebook tonight. We've got Fort Wayne checking in. Uh, the Woodlands, Texas, in fact, John from the Woodlands, Texas, says he hasn't missed a home game in three years, so racking up some frequent flyer miles. Also, South Bend and Hillsdale, Michigan, checking in as well. do have a question here. Uh, college football has changed a lot in the past several years. With the advent of recruiting and personnel departments, can you explain what these staffers do and how do they handle recruiting versus the coaches on the staff? Well, I could talk for a long time about that. I think in general, the recruiting department has uh, really grown on a lot of staffs. Uh, ours has grown. It's not near to the level that some of these other schools are uh, because we really feel like the recruiting department is important, but also coaches doing their part of recruiting and communicating with the recruits and making sure they build a relationship is just as important. So really, Nate Dennison's our director of recruiting. We added Trent Mossberger in the offseason. He came from Nebraska. He was, uh, you know, the number two man there in charge. He's from Indianapolis, uh, does a great job. T.J. McCollum and John Morris and Justin Sims are, are three guys that uh, not only do football, but they also do recruiting as well. Uh, and those five guys kind of spearhead the charge. Actually, Tyson, uh, I take it back, we added uh, Tyson Miller as well. Uh, who, who does a little bit of video stuff but also helps in the recruiting department. So we feel like we got it un, under, under, under control. Uh, it is important. You know, these, these recruits, they want to hear from the coaches. They want to hear from the head coach, especially the ones that are really good. So you just can't hand it over to fully the recruiting department. they got to do all the, uh, the grinding work of uh, research and watching film and giving us information so that we can look at it. But I just think it's a team effort. Uh, normally nowadays you're ahead of things because you're so far in advance of uh, you know understanding 
you know, who the top prospects are as a junior, as a sophomore, as a freshman. And it's just a matter of recruiting them as hard as you can and trying to convince them to come to your school. But all those uh, roles are very important, and, uh, and that has expanded quite a bit throughout the, the, the country. Jeff, is it safe to say they're not only looking at high school tape, but are they also looking at the portal? Are, are they the people that are going to try and find people in the portal, or, or where does that? what's their role in that situation? Well, that's very active as well, and uh, we, we have certain people fully in charge of that, uh, looking at it every day and seeing who goes in there and uh, researching that, looking at their film and getting their background information and that's just important I mean there's just a lot of young men now with the ability to transfer without sitting out that want a, another opportunity and whether it's right or wrong that's what's going on in college football and it's nothing you don't you know you don't hold it against the players they just want a fresh start and uh, you know we've had quite a few come to us and do a really good job but you know you, you want to get to know them as well make sure that uh, they want to come for the right reasons after you identify that you think they have a chance to play and help your team but uh, it's 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 very active and it's really a constant thing year round that you got to be on top of. We were talking during the break about uh, the situation at the end of the Maryland game, and we'll get that in a second. But the, you know, analytics has become such a big part of college football and pro football right now. You've got full time analytics staffs in in major league sports and and even in the college ranks. And how much of a balance? Uh, you, you've said earlier this week you really don't go a lot with analytics. How much of it is? gut feeling how much of it is experience and how do you draw on that well if you're asking me uh you know we're going to study the analytics in the off season and uh and the percentages and the, on all that but really to me once you get during the season in game situations it's okay to reference back but you want to do things that uh in your gut and by feel that can help you win the game so we really probably go against the the grain a little bit on that uh because we want to be aggressive in our approach but yet smart uh, there's a lot of situations where pr people probably say we throw it too much in certain situations, but I'm interested in getting first downs and running the clock. It's just as important. Uh, yes, the end of the game was a unique situation where I knew the other team was going to probably let us score to allow them more time to go down and score. So we purposely ran a quarterback sneak and just got a little bit and not to not go in the end zone. Uh, to keep the clock running or to use their timeouts, which they had timeouts. So they were able to stop the mm -hmm. clock, but they used their timeouts. And then on third down, it became, you know what, we better not wait till fourth down to try to score because then if we don't, uh, they can go down the field, kick a field goal, and win. Let's at least score, and at best, they can tie the football game. And that's what we did. And that, I thought, worked very good until they got the ball and went down in six plays with no timeouts, went out of bounds, and scored with plenty of time left. So, you know, you just got to – you know, really talk it over quickly uh, when things are happening with your staff uh, on the headset and make a quick decision. But, uh, you know, all situational football is important. All right, we'll be back at uh, Walk-Ons in two minutes. It is the Jeff Brom Show presented by Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Toughest place in the Big Ten to come get a victory. You ask any player who's played here. Uh, Mackey is the loudest gym I've ever been in. Really, it's ridiculous. Like you just, you can't hear anything. Mackey Arena is just literally the loudest place that I've ever been in my life. Yeah, I, I'll take that to the grave. Mackey Arena is the hardest place to play. What can you say about this environment? The intro alone got me off my seat. This place could absolutely blow its top. This is the one venue where they have to have more of a read and react offense. This, this atmosphere is as good as it is in America. Maybe the best I've ever been in rivals anything I've ever seen. And the paint crew on both sides enjoy what should be the best atmosphere you will see. Mona Lisa, a spot in the sand watching the sunset on the Corona Del Mar and a sold out Holloway Gymnasium, the three most beautiful things in the world. And we get to experience one of them right now. Holloway Gymnasium is one of the most electric places in entire league NCAA volleyball, so we are so excited to be back. It's always great to see the pride that the Boilermakers bring to the gym and all the support that we get. Oh, the double down. This entire Holloway gym right now doubling down and raving. Ellis, the swing and the kill. Emma Ellis coming alive late in set number five. He's taking big swings right now, not afraid of this moment, and the crowd really loves it. Getting the keys out. 
middle. Purdue does it. They outlast Utah. Welcome back to the Jeff Brom Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union. Everyone needs a little playing time. Boilermakers back on the field Saturday night. 7.30 kickoff will be on the air at 6.30 for Purdue against Nebraska. A comment here on Facebook tonight from Daryl. It's uh, awesome to have a quarterback throw for nearly 400 yards and a couple of touchdowns, and everybody's wondering when he's going to be 100%. <laughs> uh, you know, Aiden O'Connell, that was the sixth fourth quarter comeback uh, since he's been at Purdue, and that ties Drew Brees for the most. When you tie Drew Brees in a category in anything, that's a good thing. Yes, it is. That's a great category to be in. And, and as, as everyone sees, I mean, Aiden uh, is a young man of uh, great faith. He's got uh, composure. Uh, he stays relaxed no matter the situation. So we always know we have a chance no matter what the score is. And I think that, that we had a little rough stretch there of three turnovers in a row and uh, an interception, a fumble by Aiden, then another fumble, and then we just kind of Hung in there and got back on track. And I just think that uh, when you have a group of guys that you know, understand that that's part of football, just keep on playing, uh, you know, that helps. I think Payne Durham showed a little bit of the want to that this team possesses. He, he, should, he should have charged a couple of guys for rides down the field. Uh, they hit him at about the 25-yard line, and he almost dragged. In fact, I think if Mershon hadn't actually uh, – Mershon was trying to help him, might have knocked him over. He might have scored on that. Well, for some reason, he has a knack of carrying people quite a long ways. And, uh, you know, it was, it was uh, busted coverage by them. Uh, Payne got wide open, you know, made a really good catch. It was a little bit of a low throw and then uh, took it down the field. And, of course, Michelle and those guys helped him uh, get close to the end zone. So just a really good team effort uh, that, uh, you know, making a play in that key situation when you're trying to work the clock and, and keep your one-point lead was huge for us. Uh, speaking of Mershon, we're going to have him on in a few minutes. Five catches for 54 yards and a touchdown. That was a tough touchdown catch, too, on the sidelines. He did a great job keeping his feet in bounds. Great play by Mershon. And you know what? Mershon has really worked hard. Uh, like I've said before, he's had some injuries that have kind of set him back, and, you know, they've just been untimely. Uh, he's been able to practice more uh, the last month, uh, and I think he'd probably be the first one to tell you he probably feels uh, more comfortable out there. But uh, we need him. He's a big presence. Uh, he's played a lot of football. He's practiced a lot for us. He knows that, uh, you know, Aiden's going to throw to whoever's open or whoever the, uh, you know, progression tells him to throw to. And uh, we need Marshawn to make plays, and he's done a really good job lately. And our other guest tonight, Corday Sidnor, had a couple of sacks for you on Saturday. And one of those I don't think was less a quarterback sack than it was a quarterback swallow. I mean, he just enveloped that guy in the backfield. Well, Corday's got a lot of promise, and uh, the one thing that, when he came in here, his work ethic uh, even surprised us. It was off the charts. He does everything you ask him more. He's really developed his body. He's really worked hard. Uh, I think he was hurt a lot of his senior year of football, so he just kind of had to overcome that. But, uh, you know, he's got a, a lot of uh, a big upside, and I think, uh, you know, we want him to continue to make plays, but he has a great attitude. He's a tremendous team player. He's well-liked uh, by the entire team, and, you know, he'll end up being a really great leader for us. We're at the midway point of the season, Jeff, and you're still two weeks away from your bye. A question from John here, a simple question. Do we have enough running backs right now? That, that's one of the rooms that's starting to get a little bit thin. Well, every year you're going to have some situations come up, and uh, that's why you got to develop all your guys as much as you can just in case you need them. Um, uh, you know, right now Devin uh, Maccabee is going to have to, you know, carry the load. Uh, Kobe Lewis is a transfer that we – took that uh, you know got here late so it just takes a while to learn some things at times uh, but uh, you know he'll be up this week we're trying to get King back uh, as fast as we can uh, Tyrone Tracy's going to have to play a dual role in the backfield um, so sometimes we have the flexibility to kind of move some guys there as well but unfortunately Devin you know hurt his foot he's going to be out for an extended period of time and he's been doing a really really good job for us Dylan Downing that's uh, I mean gonna, excuse yeah, me yeah, he's uh, Dylan be Downing I'm sorry yep. Dylan all right, when we come back, we're going to hear from Mershon Rice. It is the Jeff Brom Show. It's presented by the Roman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. And a short yardage pass becomes a little bit longer than that, thanks to Payne Durham. Third and six. Tungavailoa, another high snap, really, and intercepted. Picked off by Corey Trice. Brings it across midfield. There's a flag at the near side. Trice looking to take it back. 
into Maryland territory and brought down at about the, the 35 yard line. I heard you say that already once. Handoff, pushing for the end zone, and it's a touchdown for Purdue. The kind of recent time to throw, a back shoulder catch by TJ Sheffield, and a pickup of a first down. On whoever he's cutting after he starts from inside the tackle box. O'Connell, what a drive that he has engineered. Going for the corner of the end zone. It's a touchdown for Purdue. From Aiden O'Connell to be able to hit Mershon Rice right over the shoulder. What it look like. I could be wrong. I'm sure that'll be the lead conversation at halftime for those guys. The pitch to Salik Knotts. Three matchups. Tungavailoa goes down in the backfield. O'Connell. O'Connell finding a level spin out of that Tyrone Tracy Jr. Into Maryland territory. O'Connell gets rid of it. And finds his receiver trying to make his way to the 25-yard line. Still going. Ran back after only playing in the opener this year. Tungavailoa is absolutely smothered. Corday Sidnor with the sack. O'Connor surveying a touchdown catch by Toro. Matchup wise, today's game, it just makes that much more sense. This ends up being an angle route from your tight end. Injuries and they're looking through it again this year. Hands off to Makapi, who's in for the touchdown. The decision by Jeff Brom, third down, deciding that now it's game time. Let's get the points on the board here. Welcome back to Walk-Ons. It's time for the Pro Boilers feature where we look at how former Purdue student athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our Pro Boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler made. Raheem Mostert had a big game for the Miami Dolphins this week. 18 carries, 113 yards and a touchdown. But the Dolphins fell to the New York Jets. Rondale Moore, seven catches for 68 yards for the Arizona Cardinals in a loss to Philadelphia. Juwan Bentley had five tackles and a couple of quarterback hurries for New England in their shutout win over Detroit. For the Lions, Derek Barnes had a couple of tackles in the game. And George Karloftis on Monday Night Football had a sack and three quarterback hurries in the Chiefs win over the Las Vegas Raiders. Joined by Mershon Rice, a junior from Reynoldsburg, Ohio, which you tell me is just outside Columbus, correct? Correct, correct. So I'm sure you had a lot of Ohio State uh, stuff going up, growing up or hearing a lot about Ohio State, right? Yeah. Um, I grew up a Ohio State fan, actually, and to this day, my family is still a Ohio State fan, so I got to hear their mouth thing there every week about Ohio State. Now, even when the Boilermakers are playing Ohio State, I mean, they, they, I got to think they got to cross the fence on that one, right? That's It's mixed on that one. <laughs> oh, man, tough family. Tough, yeah, tough, definitely. Tough crowd. Uh, you are a, a communications major. Yes. Uh, you told me you have several minors, though. What What are some of the other things besides communications you're studying here? Uh, organizational leadership, entrepreneurship, and some retail. So is uh, is uh, owning your own business in your future? Yes. What possibly. What do you have in mind there? Do you have a new product, or what, what's your what's your sales pitch here? I don't got no sales pitch <laughs> right now. I'm just trying to figure it out as a all right as the weeks go. Well, you got to just if you learn out all the techniques, then it doesn't really matter what you sell because right. it will sell itself, right? You're right. Um, we talked with uh, Coach Brown in the last segment, and when you've been healthy, you've been very productive. Um, the problem or this, the the challenge has been getting healthy. Are you healthy right now? Do you feel good about yes. it, with your body? Yes, uh, I, I feel great right now. Um, but I'm still taking strides to continue to feel better uh, as the season progresses because I know it's a long season um, and I need to be ready. 
Uh, we talked about the touchdown you scored against Maryland. Uh, it's, it's always tough when you got a toe tap and try to catch the football. Walk us through that play and what you saw, because that was a great catch and a really a tough throw there by Aiden. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, Aiden, he's going to put the ball where it needs to be almost every time, and it's something that we work on a consistent basis. I seen, I lined up, and I, I seen the corner inside leverage, and I just kind of knew that I had to just run to the spot. And the ball was right there. So that's more of a sight thing. I mean, Aiden kind of knew what area you were in, but you had to see how the DB was going to play in yes, there a little yeah, bit. Yeah, definitely. That uh, affected how I attacked him before uh, I ran to the spot. And that's why it's really important you guys get to throw the ball a lot to each other because you've got to know where each other are. Your, court, your quarterback has to trust you and vice versa. What is it like catching passes? Describe how Aiden throws the football to you most of the time. It's going. It's it's a. It's then there. You could say it's a perfect ball every time. Um, it, it's something I've been saying about Aiden since I've gotten here in 2019. He just he throws a pretty ball, and I think um, some other teammates will agree with that. But it's always in the right spot. So it's just up to you to to catch the ball. One of the memorable plays we've talked about in the game on Saturday was Payne Durham's run after the catch late in the game, and you were trying to escort him down the field. You had the best seat in the house looking at that. They were starting to jump on his back around the 25-yard line and couldn't bring him down. What, what, how were you trying to help him to get in the end zone there? Um, well, I seen him jump on his back, and I was like, well, I don't really want to watch. So I'm going to try to get him as far down the field as I can and try to get him in the end zone maybe. But um, – it, you know, it worked out in a great way. You know, we was able to run some time off the clock after that and, you know, came out with the win. We've talked about the fact, Marshawn, you've had to play the last couple of weeks on the road. I've got to believe this team is ready to get back at ross Aid Stadium and hear a lot of people cheering for you for a change. Right. Yeah, yeah. Every time we're in ross Aid, it's an amazing experience. The, I think we sell out almost every single time. You just come out and you see all the support, and it, it makes you want to go that much harder. You know, it's the third night game that Purdue has played this year in four home games. Uh, kind of it probably takes you back to the high school days playing those Friday night light games. <laughs> yes, it's, it's very memorable for me, and it's, uh, it's a really, it makes you feel good. Definitely makes you feel good. Any problem at all seeing the ball? I mean, the lighting is great at Ross Aiden throughout the, uh, most of the stadiums in the Big Ten. Do you have any issues at night, though, picking up the football differently than during the day? Uh, not usually. That's just something that we have to work on as receivers and even as quarterbacks. You know, it's all about our preparation of how we track the ball and, and things like that. So it's just it's something you have to prepare for. Well, Mershon, congratulations on a great game on Saturday. Let's keep it going and see if we can uh, send the Cornhuskers home a little unhappy this week. Thank you. I appreciate All it. All right, Mershon Rice joining us. Corday Sidner will be with us next. It's the Jeff Brom Show, presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Third and six. Tonga Vailoa, another high snap, really, and intercepted. Picked off by Corey Trice. Brings it across midfield. There's a flag at the near side. Trice looking to take it back into Maryland territory and brought down at about the, the 35 yard line. I heard you say that already once. Hand off. Pushing for the end zone, and it's a touchdown for Purdue. Got a recent time to throw and back shoulder catch by TJ Sheffield and a pickup of a first down. On whoever he's cutting after he starts with inside the tackle box. O'Connell, what a drive that he has engineered going for the corner of the end zone. It's a touchdown for Purdue. From Aiden O'Connell to be able to hit Mershon Rice. That could be wrong. I'm sure that'll be the lead conversation at halftime for those guys. The pitch to Salik Knotts. And Tunga Vailoa goes down in the backfield. Tunga Vailoa is absolutely smothered. O'Connor surveying a touchdown catch by Tara. Looking through it again this year. Hands off to Makapi, who's in for the touchdown. The decision by Jeff Brom, third down, deciding that now it's game time. Let's get the points on the board. Here. 
Welcome back to the Jeff Brown Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. The Rorman Automotive Group is supporting your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Jeff Brown Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics. Rorman Automotive Group, Boiler Up and Hammer Down. We're joined by Corday Sidnor, who is a redshirt freshman from New York City. Uh, financial counseling and planning is your major, right? Yes, uh, well, how did you choose that one? Uh, honestly, I just want to learn how money works and, like, just be more like fo- like focused on like how to make money and stuff like that so that's why I chose it uh, let's talk about your path here uh, you growing up in New York City um, how did you find Purdue I and mean, wh- where did Purdue come on your radar so uh, Sanusi Kane is a big reason why the safety for our team is a big reason why I'm here um, it was a, a lot of uh, New York City guys here as well uh, Tyreek Murphy Ahmad Anderson they transferred out but um, Living in New York, there's not a lot of football players who go to play the next level, like Power Five. So when I saw, like, there's a bunch of New York City guys, I was like, wow, let me, let me join the team. So that's the reason why I'm here. I saw that you suited up for the first time as a football player at age five, but you had a unique opportunity growing up. You actually got to go to the Super Bowl, not just go to the Super Bowl, meet the commissioner, ask some questions. How did that all come about? So long story short, I saw uh, me and my dad were sitting on the couch and we saw a commercial. It was uh, called Together We Make Football. And it was basically a contest where um, they wanted to, young kids or anybody really uh, or why they love football. So my dad is a videographer. He makes like commercials and short documentaries. So he was like, oh, I want to do a story. We, uh, I got chose to be one of the finalists, but I didn't win. But uh, Roger Goodell personally invited me to the Super Bowl. And I got to do all the like uh, Super Bowl media festivities. I got to interview Bruno Mars, um, interview uh, Roger Goodell, and it was just so fun. It was something I'll never forget. I did see a quote at the end of that. You told the Commissioner Goodell in about, what, 10 years, I'll see you back here on the stage at the NFL draft. Yeah. So you're right on schedule. Yeah, God willing, I'll keep, I'll keep working. I'll, that'll, that'll be the, the end goal. Well, let's talk about this season because you've uh, taken an increased role in this defense, and you made your presence known on uh, Saturday. We talked during the game. You consumed the quarterback on a couple of those sacks. That yeah. had to feel pretty good. Yeah, it felt great. Uh, I just cut it loose and just watched film and – Ended up just cutting the loose, yeah. Now, we were on the East Coast. Did you have any people come down from New York? Do you have family and friends in the stands for that one? Yes, I had 22 people there. My dad was calling me up throughout the week, like, make sure you get tickets. <laughs> I have a lot of family coming. So I did that, and there was a lot of love and support. Uh, you had the opportunity to play last year on the same defensive line and probably learn from, from George Karloftis, a first-round NFL draft pick. What, what tips or anything were you able to pick up from him? Oh, uh, like getting off the ball, like learning to use speed to power. I, I try to be in George's hip pocket every chance I get because he's a great defensive lineman. He's actually he's doing great things in the league right now. So any chance I got, I just try to follow him and ask him questions and things like that. Corday, there's got to be a little bit of a difference between New York City and West Lafayette, Indiana. Uh, the lights may not stay on quite as long here in Indiana. What were the biggest adjustments coming from the big city here to the Midwest? Oh, really? When, actually, when I was driving in, seeing straight cornfields was a little bit, you know, kind of like whoa there's no skyscrapers and people is not outside at 12 at night normally you don't hear no sirens or anything so it was big it was peaceful but it was just something that I had to adjust to you've got a defensive line coach in Mark Hagan that uh, I think a lot of players really uh, look up to and and you know you have to you respect Mark gets your attention coach Hagan he's a demanding guy but talk about his style on the field Uh, coach Hagan he's an aggressive aggressive coach but um, he just wants to see the best out of you. He wants everybody to just uh, live up to the standard and be great. Just give your all, every play, every rep, and whatever you show on film, he wants that to be good. Well, we've talked with Coach in past segments about the depth on this team and the fact that you're able to roll three deep at every position on the defensive line. I would assume that means you know that it's all full go, all breaks, or all gas, no breaks. And yeah. when you're in there, you've got to go all out because you're only going to be on the field for a certain amount of plays. Yeah, uh, Coach Hagan uh, in the D.C., they – Tell us, like, strain, like they use strain uh, is a big word that we use. To give it to you all for four plays. And Coach Hagan said, if you give it all for four plays, you're going to be tired. And so when we're tired, we tap our helmets and he gets somebody in for us, a new fresh guy. And that's how we stay fresh in the fourth quarter when the game gets tight. I'm not, like, for that much fatigue and I'm fresh. Uh, we asked Mershon about playing at home. It's the first home game, in fact, the only home game in the month of October, and you've got to be excited to get back in front of your home fans on Saturday night. Night football is always something a little bit special, too. Well, the atmosphere is going to be great. Uh, we, I feel like we're going to put on a show, 
it's going to be fun, and all the fans is going to show love and support. It's just going to be an amazing atmosphere. Well, Cordell, come to the field a little bit hungry. You need a couple more quarterbacks on Saturday night, and we'll see where that takes you. And uh, congratulations again on a great game, and look forward to seeing you the second half of the season. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right, we'll have the coach with us next. It's the Jeff Brown Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Our Boilermakers have always been what unite us. To this hallowed field, we return each fall to be a part of something special. We've seen legends born and moments etched in time. For nearly a century, ross Aid Stadium has been the home of Purdue football. As we forge ahead, we have a rare opportunity to fortify the legacy of future generations of faithful Boilermakers. Together, we will guarantee the passion you have for the old golden black will endure for years to come. Let the carnage and the chaos continue. How about the Boilermakers? Boiler up, friends. The time is now. to a free ball for the Hawkeyes. Tessier on a banjo, though. A slight way to your right side attacker. As a person who is tall and a long wingspan, you always feel bad when that happens as Colvin sends that right down. At the service line, Tessier looking for Urquhart. That is sent back. A big block for Purdue. And they sweated it out. Banjo has that block tipped. Tessier to Urquhart, sends it out of bounds, and despite the huge fight from the Iowa Hawkeyes, Purdue. The 2022 Purdue football season is presented by Purdue Global. Purdue Global is Purdue's accredited and affordable online solution for working adults. Persistence pays off at Purdue Global. Let's catch up on Facebook. Huntsville, Alabama checking in. Murrieta, California. Swamico, Wisconsin. Boonville, Indiana, and Austin, Texas are with us. Quick housekeeping here. We will have a show next Wednesday night right here at 6.05 at Walk-Ons. Then we're off during the bye week, so there's no show two weeks from tonight. Our first uh, Matt Painter and Katie Gerald show coming up on Halloween night. So we're going to start the overlap in October. And, of course, we'll have football shows throughout the end of the football season. And we're six games away from the end of it, at least from the regular season. And, Jeff, next up, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, a team that made a coaching change here last month. And they have simplified things, and they've won their last two games. And they come in here, in here with some momentum. Well, anytime you win two games in a row in the Big Ten, you're doing a good job. So these guys uh, have always had talent. Uh, they've got really good-looking players. They look the part. They play the part. They're athletic. they got big guys. Offensively, the quarterback does a good job. The running back's a really good player, and they have a really big tight end with a couple of receivers. So, you know, this is a team that uh, we're going to have to play well and, uh, you know, continue to find a way to get better and, uh, in all facets of the game. But uh, it'll be a, a great football game. And, um, you know, and it's an important game, too. Our guys got to understand, you know, we've got to – figure out a way to win our home games, and this is going to be a great test. You mentioned the running back. I've really been impressed watching Anthony Grant on TV. He's a guy that breaks a lot of tackles and runs really hard. Your defense is going to have to do a good job wrapping him up on Saturday. Well, this will be a big test uh, for, for those for those guys uh, on our team. Uh, this team will try to run the ball. They have a quarterback who's athletic, throw the ball out of play action. Um, and, uh, you know, I just think that uh, – they're playing with renewed energy. Uh, there's nothing for them to lose. They're playing loose. You can tell by the way they play, and we're going to have to match that intensity and, and do a good job. Defensively, you said they simplify things a little bit. What what are they trying to take away? As you look at them on film, what, what kinds of defensive a, a, alignments do you expect to see on Saturday night? Well, right now they've uh, probably played a little more man coverage than they had in the past. They at least want to let their guys guard somebody and know what they're doing and, and try to get a body on a body and make you earn what you're doing. And, and with that, you can normally load the box, take away the run, and then they'll mix in, uh, you know, a different, couple of different change-ups and some cover tubes and things. 
to kind of throw you off, off of some different fronts. But I just think in general, uh, there's less holes in this defense than there was before. Uh, they're doing a good job of just kind of making it simple for their players, letting them go out there and play and execute. And when that happens, you, you've got to earn uh, your yards. You've got to earn your points and earn your touchdowns. So we're going to have to earn those things and be efficient, figure out a way to take care of the football and not make big mistakes. Purdue had a 28-23 win last year at Nebraska. One of the big keys in that game was the play of Jalen Graham, who had a couple of interceptions, including one for a touchdown. Jalen got on the field on Saturday for the first time since the opener uh, against Penn State, and I thought for a guy that hadn't played in four weeks, he played pretty well. Well, he did a really good job, uh, especially as the game got going on. He started off a little rusty and a little unsure, but you know, once he got a couple plays in him, uh, he really got going. He, he's somebody who can really be a difference maker for us. We need him to play well. He's got good vision. He understands what the team's trying to do. He can get in lanes. Uh, he can make tackles. He's got length, uh, and he can run. So I just think we got to continue to get him polished up where he's back to – what he was doing at the end of the year, uh, but if he's that, uh, if he's going to get to that form, he can really help us win. Corey Trice was named earlier as the comeback. Uh, he's, uh, he's on the watch list for the comeback player of the year award that's given out by the college sports communicators. He had his first pick of the year, and again, uh, Corey Trice in the secondary at full strength is a is a big plus back in that back end of the defense. It really is, and I think each week he's gotten better and better. And you know, coming off a major knee injury takes a little time, and um, you know, he got back pretty fast and uh, sometimes they even say it's not fully feeling normal for a full year so he's playing pain uh, excuse me playing through a little pain uh, but he understands uh, that's what he's going to have to do and I just think he feels more comfortable each and every week and once again he's like Jalen Graham you know those two guys are, are big athletic bodies that when they're playing very well they can help us win. All right, our final segment of the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group is coming up on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Toughest place in the Big Ten to come get a victory. You ask any player who's played here. Uh, Mackey is the loudest gym I've ever been in. Really, this is ridiculous. Like you just, you can't hear anything. Mackey Arena, it's, it's literally the loudest place uh, I've ever been in my life. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that to the grave. Mackey Arena is the hardest place to play. What can you say about this environment? The intro alone got me off my seat. This place could absolutely blow its top. This is the one venue where they have to have more of a read and react offense. This, this atmosphere is as good as there is in America. Maybe the best I've ever been in rivals anything I've ever seen. And the paint crew on both sides enjoy what should be the best atmosphere you will see. Mona Lisa, a spot in the sand watching the sunset on the Corona Del Mar and a sold out Holloway Gymnasium, the three most beautiful things in the world. And we get to experience one of them right now. Holloway Gymnasium is one of the most electric places in entire league of NCAA volleyball, so we are so excited to be back. It's always great to see the pride that the Boilermakers bring to the gym and all the support that we get. Oh, double down. This entire Holloway gym right now doubling down and raving. Ellis, the swing and the kill. Emma Ellis coming alive late in set number five. Taking big swings right now, not afraid of this moment. The crowd really loves it. Getting the keys out. Middle. Who does it? They outlast Utah. Final segment of the Jeff Brown Show from Walk Ons and uh, the Big Ten West right now, wide open. Uh, really, the Big Ten East is wide open. You still have three teams there that are undefeated, although that number will shrink to two this week when Penn State plays Michigan. But I think you've made a, a, a solid point throughout the season. Uh, it's a one-game season six times from here on in. And if you take care of every week one at a time, then all the other things take care of themselves. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a it's easily said. simple way of putting it. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, we understand uh, there's a lot of really good football teams, a lot of teams in this conference playing well. Um, and, you know, you just got to figure out a way every week to, you know, bring your best uh, play uh, to the game and, and find a way to win. Uh, I do think 
Uh, we've been battle tested to, to this point. Uh, we've been in uh, five FBS games, and all five we could have won or lost either one. Luckily, we we won three of those, and uh, yeah, we'd like to win more, but uh, we could have lost any of those games. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we have to figure out a way to continue to get a little better. Uh, we have to push forward. We have to, um, you know, learn from the mistakes we've made along the way, and we've just got to play hard. So, I just think preparing as hard as we can every week, making sure. Come Saturday morning, we can look in the mirror and say, you know what, I don't know if I could prepare it even more. And then you got to go and execute game day. So it's just not that as simple as uh, showing up and thinking things are going to happen. You really got to <clears throat> take it in your own hands and, and just go out there and compete to win. So I do think um, playing hard, we've been good at, but uh, it's going to be a test every week, and it starts this week with Nebraska. And we've talked, Jeff, a lot tonight about defense because when you get to the second half of the season in Big Ten country, you know the weather's going to start to turn. You may get some games where it's windy. You may get some games where it's raining. Defense tends to travel, and if you look at the teams right now that are kind of looking at near the top of the Big Ten West, you know, you got Illinois, which is playing great defense. Iowa, you know, is always solid defensively. Wisconsin, uh, that defense is a constant week after week. A lot of good defense is, is exactly right. And, and that's kind of, in my opinion, what this conference is known for. A lot of really good, tough defenses that, uh, you know, you got to got to go up against. So I just think that every week is going to be a challenge. Uh, you've got to figure out a way to, you know, continue to progress on defense and, and do good things and stop the run and get better in situational football offensively. It's just a better matter of scoring points. And uh, we've got to be good enough to do it by the pass. We've got to be good enough to do it by the run if we have to. And I just think that's the challenge. You work hard at it, um, and then you go cut a loose game day. But I know we're excited to get back home. The crowds have been outstanding. We're looking forward to another great crowd. Uh, without question, they make a difference, and we hope to do our part come game day. It is Parents' Day. This game has been sold out for weeks, and again, with just one home game in the month of October, you know it's going to be a crazy atmosphere. You'd love to get off, as always, to a fast start and get the crowd engaged early. Yes, we would. We'd love to get that uh, get that going early because I know our crowd will do their part. They'll be there earlier. They'll be into the game. And we've got to, uh, you know, give them something to, to, to cheer on early and uh, continue to do that throughout the game. But, you know, it's going to be a four-quarter game. Uh, getting off to a great start is important, but just, you know, playing hard to the end and staying into it and making sure that uh, we're challenging ourselves to be the best we can uh, in that moment will be uh, what we're going to strive for. Well, Jeff, congratulations on three in a row. Let's see if we can make it four this week against Nebraska. Okay, thank you. All right, the Boilermakers will take on the Nebraska Cornhuskers on Saturday night at 7.30. Again, our pregame coverage starts at 6.30. We want to thank our engineer tonight, Wes Scott. Our producer back at our Learfield studios is Jacob Smith. Video provided for uh, Facebook and uh, for Twitter by Hunter Massingill, so we appreciate his help as well. Again, we're back here every Wednesday night during football season at 6.05. It's the Jeff Brown Show coming to you from Walk-Ons in West Lafayette. And uh, we'll start basketball shows here on Halloween. So we've got a lot going on here in the Purdue Memorial Union. For the head coach, for Mershon Rice, for Corday Sidner, this is Tim Newton. We'll see you Saturday night at Ross Aid, Boilermakers and the Cornhuskers. Until then, good night, everybody.